Who do you think of when people mention the essentials of art? We bet one of those you thought of was the man who basically invented Impressionism. Well, if you actually thought of Claude Bonet, then we are quite happy that you know your stuff. You get it. But what do you know about Claude Bonet besides the fact that he painted over 250 water lilies? Don't worry. We're not here to judge you based on the amount of interesting facts about Claude Monet that you know. We're actually here to educate you. So, whether you've named some things you know about this impressionist or not, we'll tell you something new and capturing. First of all, of course we'll tell you the obligatory boring details. Oscar Claude Monet was born on November 14th in 1840 in Paris, yet he moved at the age of five with his whole family to a small town, Le Havre near where the famous sign goes into the sea. His small town didn't really have much potential for his development as an artist at first sight. Yep, there were some people that encouraged Monet to create. The boy started out with simple caricatures of villagers that he saw on the street. He proceeded to draw them for a while and gained quite a reputation. Now these little drawings would be hanging in the only art store in the village. They were also requested by the villagers themselves and sold by Claude for a small price. At the age of 18, as most of us would, Monet decided that it's his time to shine as an adult and made one of his controversial decisions. He enrolled in Academia Suisse instead of going into the serious Academy of Fine Arts. Oscar's father never approved his career choices and wanted his son to become a businessman. Monet's mother, on the other hand, agreed with her son and always supported him on his tough journey. She was incredibly artistic herself. Her death truly shook Oscar to his core and left him lonely and shattered. Monet moved to Paris trying to improve his career and even though the critics were happy with Oscar's paintings sometimes, he was still suffering from the lack of resources. He was accepted to participate in the salon and one of his paintings finally brought some clout to Monet. It was a painting of his lover, Camille Dansou, that later on became Monet's wife. They had their first son together and begged for financial help from Oscar's father, but he never agreed to help the young couple. Monet was extremely anxious and despondent, so he started having suicidal thoughts and even made an attempt to drown himself in the Seine River. A patron to Monet's work finally saved their lives by starting to sponsor Claude's paintings and it all started to look brighter again. The work presented by Monet in 1874 became revolutionary. Impression. Sunrise. Upset and threw off a bunch of critics. They ended up saying that these kinds of paintings look more like a sketch rather than a piece of art. They laughed and mocked the art, calling Monet and artists of this kind impressionists. However, the name stuck and was claimed back, since nowadays it's one of the most interesting flows of art. Time went by, and the events in Monet's life started looking tragic again. His loved wife passed away, and the artist became depressed. Camille's death caused him to paint the Ice Drift series. He eventually met another woman, Alice, that ended up living with him in the Gaverny Garden, where the Monet mansion was and is located. He was obsessed with drawing outside. He'd come out and try to capture every state of the things he loved. That's where the 250 plus water lilies came from. But there's another one of the fascinating objects that Monet painted. The Japanese bridge. Why is it interesting? After his second wife Alice died, Monet became depressed once again. He developed cataracts in his right eye, and as they progressed further, his vision degraded to a weirder state. If you look at his paintings of the Japanese bridge, located in his garden, chronologically, you will notice how from a normal, mostly realistic greenish-bluish bridge with pretty leaves, the Japanese bridge turned into a bright, eye-burning red bridge that looks like a gate to hell. This story is tragic, yet it is itself a form of art, the one that is disturbingly pretty. So don't forget that there is a story behind every painting, every artist, and every vision.